So before the break, we were discussing how to create time and conserve time. We haven't discussed how to create or conserve space. Space. How can you create or conserve more space? Space is space. Huh? There is no wrong answer. <laughs> it is only through silence you conserve and you create space. We have to ask the question, people are asking how do I slow down my thought, but none of us pay attention to how much noise pollution that we create. The noise pollution clutters the mind. The speed of the thought takes away time. The noise that you create Clutters the space in your mind. As I was noticing people drinking tea and throwing it into the trash, I noticed that we have become unconscious of how we use space. You are throwing, you are taking each cup a non-biodegradable styrofoam cup to begin with and imagine how much landfill that we create with that and the space you used it in the dustbin or the garbage can can be used to store 100 times more than what we have stored right there in space you not only have the styrofoam cup you drank the Tea and just threw it into the dust, into the garbage can. Please forgive me, I am not trying to find fault with people. We are synthesized devotees. We have to care about environment. Yesterday we spent a lot of time about earth, water, fire, wind, the space. And using these because God has allowed us to use this space. Have we actually thought about it? In California we don't do like that. In fact, children we we'll do it as a service to stand in the garbage bins and they will actually take the plates and cups from the devotees. They stack these cups and they don't throw them into the trash can. They throw the, the, the trash out but then stack the plates so that we don't create landfill. We are talking about how to eliminate the mind in time and space. If you don't practice this externally and internally, you may be chanting Rudram to your heart, but the Rudram chanting is useless. It's completely useless. Brothers and sisters, Swami has not asked us to chant Vedas because we are some pundits or scholars, etc. Swami has asked us to learn and chant Rudram so that we can practice in our daily lives. Is there a reason for me to talk? And if I do not, how much space I have saved in my mind, which is cluttered with unnecessary talk. It does two things. The only property of space, the only property of space is sound. Without space, sound cannot travel. So when we are looking at time, it's about breath, it's about related to the wind, the element of the nature. When we are talking about space, it is related to the sound. And this sound that is resonating, there is only one fundamental sound. If you begin to hear, only one sound the mind, the heart can hear, reverberating within them and outside. You only heard Om, but there is by 
generation that is traveling beyond that. You only heard three syllables, A, U, M, Hum. So, when we are connecting to the silence between two words, then you begin to listen to space. As that space is created, the distance between two thoughts also expands. Is very careful, very important to practice. Between one thought and the second thought, if you can create more distance, you will create enormous amount of space and the peace. Swami was there to inaugurate the indoor stadium. And there was a basketball game that was supposed to be played by the boys as an opening one. And Swami was there, and there were, of course, there was spin drop silence. And uh, the game started, and this ball was getting hit on the ground. And in that silence, Swami looked at this boy and asked him, too much noise, no? <laughs> and the boy said, yes, Swami, yes, yes. Of course it is, yes. And then Swami said, you are listening to the sound of the ball getting hit on the ground. I am listening to the silence between the two sounds created by the ball on the ground. Focus on the silence not on the sound. What a phenomenal thing. Very simple. Very simple. So, in this consciousness space of ours, every thought is like the basketball sound. Thought comes, it's creating that noise in that space. Then what happens? Don't focus on the thought. Let it go. <coughs> and then make sure that you are aware of the second thought coming. Then what happens? Second thought will take a very long time to come. Because you are watching it. <laughs> this is what is called presence of mind. This is not rocket science. You don't have to look at that word tole, power of now, this and that and all the books and go crazy about everything that you can read and lose your mind. Swami's teachings are so simple and so profound. They are so simple that you forget them so easily. And hence what happens is the space and the time aspect of it is related to the speed of the thought and the space is related to the distance between the two thoughts. When those are annihilated, then your mirror starts disappearing. And so we went through these two aspects of it. And there is one thing and only thing that creates the time for us. What is that that creates the time for us? Only one thing created time for all of us. Yes, hello, Saira. Today morning I talked about it. Huh? How is time created? Huh? 24 hours, how they are created? By the rotation of the earth. Come on. Rotation of the earth. Around the sun. That's how time is created. So this rotation of the earth, earth is the body, sun is our source, consciousness. As you slow down, 
the rotation of this body or the body consciousness, you create more time for yourself. And the mind which is now related to the moon begins to shine fully and this is the significance of celebrating Mahashivaratri and all the festivals associated with Hinduism are all constructed around the auspiciousness of time, space and identity. Therefore, when we do the Sankalpa, we first invoke the space. Janmo, Dime, Bharata Parikhe, Bharata Kande, Vero, Dakshinadik, Bhage, Sise, Ischava, Yukjukpe, all about space. Asmin Vartamana Chandra Asmin Vartamana Chandra Manina Prabhavari Sambhak Saranam Mathe all about time. Then you talk about your identity. Haritasa Gotra Bhasya Seshantri Sekara Sarmanam Dhesya Dhammavati Sametasya about your identity. See how beautiful the ritual is constructed. The ritual is nothing but the spirit reflected in it. And then you say all of these things about the space where you are present, about the time when you have started the ritual, and about who is doing the ritual. And with all these three you say, I am going to integrate all three, offer all three, dissolve the mirror, and therefore I am now going to start this ritual in complete presence of the divine. So we went through the space, we went through the time and now we come to this thing called identity. What is identity? How do you identify yourself? How do you identify yourself? Okay, now I have to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you identify yourself? Name. 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 What is your name? A number. A number. What? Social security. <laughs> Oh, the date of birth identification. Okay, what else you identify? Form. Form. We are all humans only. So it has a picture. Ah, oh, as a form. Ah, oh, identification as a form. Identification, yes? What? Culture. Identification. Culture. Somebody said SA is a South Africa individual. <laughs> <laughs> That's the definition of SAI. Oh, even in SAI, why do you want to identify yourself? Yes. Okay. What else we identify with? We said name, we said picture, which is form, date of birth, which is related to time. Huh? Fingerprint. Yeah. If you can't sign, you have to do no, even if you can sign. Okay. Fingerprint, which is related to, again, identification as body. Yes, this body identification. What else you identify with? Gender, yeah, male, female, yes, and then somebody said sex, and I said once in a week, sorry. But <laughs> what? <laughs> I just want to check whether you are paying attention. <laughs> so yeah, gender, okay. Race. Race. Oh yeah, very important. Yeah, apartheid, anti-apartheid, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, South Africa, very, very important, yes. Uh, next. Uh, profession, yes, from beautiful. I'm looking for very simple answers, don't think too high spiritual. I have no name, I have no form. <laughs> we are identifying ourselves with all these things. Address, place. So, where is the identification coming in? Time, space. Gender, which is object identification, everything related to all the things that are completely impermanent. Yes. Who said, see, beautiful? Swami said, if, you ask, if I ask your name, if I ask your name, would you, would you introduce yourself to somebody? You say, what do you say? I am Yastin. I am Yastin. Are you Yastin? No. I am Yastin, you said. Is the I am Yastin or is the name of the I am Yastin? <laughs> no, you are all laughing. Think about it seriously. When you introduce yourself, 
You say, I am, I will tell you a name. Bhagavan corrected words. Beautifully he said, you have to say, I am called Astel. I am not Astel. I am called Astel. I am identified as Astel. When you were born, you didn't have born with a tag on your forehead said Yastil. Somebody decided to give you the name Yastil. But you are not Yastil. You are identified as Yastil. What is the difference between the two? I am not what I am identified as body. I am beyond that. I did not get born with a name on my face or with an identity card or a social security number or a driver's license or a passport. <coughs> you are given all these things and they can change. His name was given as Dhawan, but he said his name is Rudra. That's the name he gave himself. He said, what I asked him what his mother said Dhawan, but he said my name is Rudra. I said, good for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So, how we are identifying ourselves? Now, the moment you understand this, I am not Yastil, I am identified as Yastil, I am not uh, a father, I am identified by my duty as father, that's other identification based on what work you do. You are called a manager, you are called a professor, you are called a doctor, you are called a mister, you are called a missus, sometimes missing also in <laughs> All these things are identified based on what you do, where you live, in what time and space and all this stuff. That is the reflection. All of that is reflection. But there are all artificial boundaries created around us. We are not bound by us. When I do, when I do the duty of taking care of my children, I am a father. When I do my duty as a friend, I am a friend. As a husband, I am a husband. I am a wife, I am a husband. I am a son, I am a brother. I am a friend, I am a manager. I am a professor, I am a doctor, I am this. All of that is nothing to do with I am. In all these things the I am is present. We lost focus on the I am and you are only focusing on what you are identified with. How much of identification has happened that it is impossible to take away this identification. Unless the mirror is dissolved. The reflection won't go away. And this mirror, to get beyond this mirror, you have to transcend the space which is silence, the time which is slowness of thought, identity which is associated with the body. How this body identification is, then how do you lose this body identification? You lose this body identification with only one thing and other, only one thing called surrender. And the surrendering is losing this identification and the only identification you have is I am none other than the servant of God. When you become the servant of God, you lose that identification. And therefore, the next Anuvaka is about how do you lose this identification? What should happen for us to lose this identification? This picture I put there, this is in Croatia. We were doing the Yajna in Croatia in 2018. And you see behind the altar, you see the Jesus picture. So, Jesus was part of the altar. There was a lot of confusion in people. Oh, this is a Hindu ritual, why did you put Jesus? I said, who said Jesus is not a Rukha? <laughs> Jesus is also the one that conquered the death. And why am I showing this picture of Jesus? Jesus' life is an incredible message of losing identification. <laughs> Jesus started saying that I am the son of God. 
And in the next half of his life, he said, I am the messenger of God. And then the last one is, me and my father are one. When you look at this picture, what you see? Anybody see anything? The light from the heart of Jesus that was not artificially created. You see me sitting there and I was telling this cameraman, please take a picture brother. And he said, for what? Yeah. And he said, I, I told him, I'll tell you later. And here I am asking the guy to take the picture. After he took the picture, nowadays you can see instantly, right? Not like old days when you have to the picture. <laughs> and then he comes running to me. Did you actually see this? Did you actually see this? I said, of course, that's why I asked you to take the picture. There was a huge light coming from the heart of the Jesus and filling the whole hall. Who says Jesus won't be present if you chat with them? <laughs> and what is the significance of this Jesus? What is the significance of life of Jesus? Losing body consciousness and and sacrifice of the cell. And that sacrifice of the cell is what makes us love the Jesus. means a fire trick offered into the sacrifice for the sake of humanity. Jesus said, Father, thy will be done. 